I was dating someone till like recently till Jan, mm. then broke up, and now I'm not really seeing anyone. Bro. Full on no fap then. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... when you're talking about like aliens or whatever supernatural, like how do you get in that zone where you're? Are you genuinely that curious about all this stuff? Nothing that comes out of my mouth is not for viewers. <laughs> 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 Boom. I don't know how to ask this question without it being like so super good. intrusive. How much money do you make? <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest turn off? You can tell when someone wants to be with you for fame or money. That's your biggest turn off, or if they don't merit it. <laughs> Is this what they call like enlightenment? It's the journey to enlightenment, mm. but that's the goal, and that's going to take decades. I've met monks from like different faiths, different schools. They're all in the same journey of like journey to enlightenment because it's the only thing you carry after you die. Believe it or not, you process things faster. You can stay disciplined more easily. You're much better as a partner to someone in like a relationship. Your relationship with your own family, your parents starts healing. So you, when you see all that, you realize, okay, this is the real deal. So it becomes so addictive that the alcohol and pot and meat look very tiny as compared to the outcomes of this. But you'll only understand it after you fully experience it yourself. And when you keep all your gum reading it like <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to India's biggest source of misinformation, the Untriggered Podcast. But this time, it's at its biggest, baddest and best because I, R.A. Ranveer Labadhyay, I'm here to building multiple businesses, to growing my platform into the biggest of its kind and building India's smartest podcast. I'm here in this penis energy filled room. <laughs> These motherfuckers. I think that is good enough. Bro. That is. It's too much that penis energy around well, me. Welcome. Like, bro, have you seen our podcast before? Like, have you seen what we've said about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. This guy is. <laughs> uh, and I've come here to like uh, sort shit out with him. Yeah, I would, I would love to. I would love to. I, I, I love your podcast, like honestly. Mm. I feel like you guys are too consistent, which okay. is uh, what you don't see too much of in uh, YouTube India nowadays. I'm waiting uh. to see what you have to say, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bro, you know something about consistency, bro. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> that much we know. Uh, consistent are hating you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Like, the thing is, when, uh, when you're criticized or hated upon mm. for being a content creator, you can always see through the layers. So I know that y'all are just motherfuckers. Yeah. So <laughs> we're just fucking around. I get I get where y'all are coming from. You can also tell when someone's actually hmm. hating Hateful. on you. Hmm. I'm not gonna take any names. <laughs> 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 I know how this works. Names <laughs> <laughs> are <laughs> When some. you said that, a list of names just flashed by. <laughs> I mean, I think the audiences are smart enough to know, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, I'll be honest. I thought it was a funny thing to do, and. I wanted it to be concluded because I was getting tired of the joke, to be very honest with you. Like, how much? Like, how much more? I was like, you know, the only way to fix it is like, we'll get him here. We'll speak to him. You guys can talk it out. We have a heart to heart, dude. He gave me a kiss outside. I dude. did give him a kiss. It was a we wet have, kiss. Also. We should have recorded that. Yeah. Before you came, he was all like, Bro, now I'm now that he's coming, I'm not gonna switch my energy and just suck up. <laughs> <laughs> he switched up. He was he in came three seconds. He, this guy. He was. I liked how he was. He was like very jokey about it. Huh. Like he's very aware of what's been said and who said it, but he's. Yeah. It's still. Are you talking about good. me? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It Should doesn't bother do you at all, like. Uh, dude, I began in fitness, and this is not a PR trained answer. Mm. This is actually how it was. Mm. Fitness as a genre is a very dark place to begin mm. your content journey. Uh, because it's just a bunch of gym bros creating that content. Yeah, yeah. If you ever go to like a gym with like a lot of bodybuilders, the vibe is already very judgmental and like mm. intense. So imagine the content creator version of it. Yeah. So imagine how much uh, criticism and uh, yeah, bro, I've exists. seen the steroid videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, so, like complete breakdowns and how how does that all that work like? Steroid videos. Yeah. So they there are people who come and they're convinced. Like, let's say you or this other bodybuilder has done steroids and they come and give you 10 reasons why I think they've done steroids. And <laughs> like, how, how do they even confirm? I don't know how they confirm, but I think if you gym long enough, mm -hmm. like uh, you, you can kind of know even like visually a mm -hmm. little bit for sure. 
so that's it begins and then you can keep breaking it down to the science or something about like your deltoid muscles if you want to yeah. get into the technicalities <laughs> I didn't think we'd be talking about this one. <laughs> you you sure. never know what you're doing. Why? Because of, because of <laughs> what we look like. <laughs> no, I mean, I just thought it'd be some sexual conversation or... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I was waiting him. for the first two minutes to get done because demonetization. So oh, I don't want to talk. I was okay. being smart about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well... Okay then let's Ooh. talk about that now. You want to talk about sexual yeah. stuff? No no you guys are the hosts so you all direct it. So okay. You're directing it into sexual domains? Yeah I mean like what are you seeing anyone now? I uh not really. Not at all. That didn't sound convincing <laughs> bro. That didn't. Sound uh hard. yeah just I mean like I was dating someone till like recently till Jan mm. then broke up. and now i'm not really seeing anyone bro full on no fap then <laughs> <laughs> well uh, <laughs> my semen is potent <laughs> and it's only meant for the special you're souls out it, there you're saving it for the right one so dude i actually follow no fap like mm. in a huge way but in phases because if you ever go to a advanced meditation course or uh, an advanced yoga course mm. they'll always prescribe that you do no fap like okay. they'll actually tell you to do no fap and you only understand it after you experience it but it's not everyone's cup of tea and i feel like if you're just holding your cum inside yeah, yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> there's no fucking point <laughs> of no fap unless you're combining it with meditation yoga nothing happens there's no effects but all those effects uh, you read about related to no fap happen if like you're combining it with like a whole lifestyle and all hmm. cum has a role to play in a man's journey yeah i'm sure bro <laughs> but, <laughs> but like it's I I would assume you do no fab because you just get laid anyway, right? <laughs> right? Why? Like, if someone's getting laid, I don't think they're. Why? Why have you just assumed that I just get laid, bro? I mean, <laughs> see, I think I think I think everyone makes these assumptions about what mainstream fame feels like. Is that is that? But fame comes with money also, and you're good looking also. I would say. God damn, I mean, good luck, bro. Serious talk, bro. This is serious, dude. Krishna, do you think I'm good looking? <laughs> no, no, I'm fucking around. Yeah, don't around. make this awkward for us. <laughs> <laughs> After that kiss, he's also switched now. Man, uh, dude, honestly, I'm like 30, and I'm in this phase which you guys will. Be in eventually, hmm. where you want to like settle down and you're you're gearing up for like your married life, your thirties and all that. So I have got a fair amount of action hmm. in my mid and late twenties, and I'm in a phase where I'm I just want to like settle down, bro. Hmm. So I'm not I'm not really dating anyone, seeing anyone without it being with the intention of. Possibly getting married to them hmm. or quickly ending the equation. That's why I like you, bro. This is the, this is the <laughs> whole the reason. They're in the same. Me and yeah. you go are. We feel the same. These What? two feel. You're trying to get married. Way. We're not yeah, trying I mean, to get married, but we'd rather. It's What? like hey, with the intention of getting married. married. At some point, <laughs> not right? getting married, but uh, maybe I don't know. At but some point. The huh. other night, though, I don't think you're married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your intention. <laughs> you got anything to say for us, Hugo? He's come to Bombay and he switched up, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just settle down in Bombay yeah, for a bit, experience I'm, the city, bro. I am, I am, dude. I'm giving it my entire uh, whatever. <laughs> entire <I> penis. All <laughs> my, <laughs> all my seed. <laughs> it's it's there. Yeah. Slow and steady. Wh- what app do you end up using? No apps, dude. No apps. No app and no really? fab, bro. Yeah. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Ranveer way, bro. <laughs> apps are a little scary, bro. Because yeah. First of all, I've seen these guys use it, and it's not that great. Secondly, <laughs> like I'm scared of just someone screenshotting anything that I say. Okay. So, like, have you heard of Raya? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. is Raya? It's it's for the famous people. Acha okay. अपने को नहीं पता है. Tell us more about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just it's for anyone who. I mean, it's a part of that exclusive community. So there mm-hmm. there isn't just famous people, but yeah, it was originally meant for famous people. It's it's expensive. It's like four k or five k a month. Oh, and, mm-hmm. but it uh, it gives you a very interesting dating pool, both from like you know the mm. surface level perspectives, but you also get to meet really um, like minded, accomplished people, people oh. who want who want uh, a certain level of a dating pool. Got it. How yeah. do you how do you get on this? <laughs> <laughs> Like who's the most famous person on there? Can you say? There is a mainstream cricketer. 
Oh. Like there are a bunch of mainstream cricketers. A bunch. Yeah, yeah. Bro, every every one has been on Raya at some point. Hmm. Yeah. Just to see what it's like, I'm assuming. Uh, dude, honestly, the one thing I figured about famous people is that the more famous they are, the lonelier they are. Okay. Like they eventually start getting like isolated even by like family members and shit. Hmm. As in, you just keep getting lonelier. So you'd be surprised uh, to know how much like hyper famous people want a relationship hmm. and not just want to get laid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking love that. Dude. This guy's been in a relationship for a year and a half. This guy's got too much house in him. <laughs> Every time I see him uh, on the internet, I'm like, of oh, these four guys, this guy is like oh. the most charged one. Yeah, you fucking nail on the head bro. with that one. Pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah. No, I say that as a compliment, bro. <laughs> yeah, his girl is not going to be happy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dating or what? Yeah. Yeah. How old are you guys, dude? Uh, We're all 24. Uh, 25 soon. This year. 25 soon. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Like next month. You know, I used to be, I used to be like this when I was like 24, 25. I thought mm. like fucking gonna only get married and all. Hmm. And, and then, then he became like this. <laughs> 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 yeah. Then yeah. I I'm got famous. <laughs> 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 no, no, bro. I, I had like a really intense like breakup when I was 25, 26. And then I had a bit, a bit, bit of a hoe phase like uh, for like two years after that. But uh, not, not like a full on hoe phase. Like I was trying to date, but it just wasn't resulting in like anything. Hmm. So out hard were you trying? <laughs> <laughs> he was trying every night. <laughs> every were night you, with someone new. Were you out every night? No, 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 no. no. Do, do a lot of girls slide in your DMs, like on a daily basis? Um, or have you become like so popular that people know it's useless to text you? I can't answer. I mean, like, I don't know if that's the case, but I consciously stay away from my DMs. I stay away from WhatsApp. I stay away from emails. Because mm. uh, there, there's definitely a part of me that's like losing my mind, bro. Like, mm -hmm. I, and I'm very aware of it. And I intend on, like, stopping content at some point soon because of this. Because it's, like, honestly, a very unbalanced life. Like, you guys see the consistency? Yeah. But it's psychotic on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll answer your question. I'm not, like, swaying away. No. I know how podcasts work. <laughs> uh, what was your question? It was something about girls DMing? Yeah. There are a lot of girls and guys who DM. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I accept the love. But I've, I, don't, I don't scan my DMs regularly. Okay. I'll tell you another a, a weirder story. When I moved into my uh, house a year and a half ago, um, I had just put up like some stories of the view from my place, okay? Mm. And no one knew where like the house actually is. Uh, but on the third day that I'm there, I'm fast asleep, my door is locked. And at seven in the morning, someone knocks on my door. And at this point, some of my teammates were also staying, like two yeah. of my teammates were staying in the house to like, uh, to do what y'all are doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like to begin shoots and all that. I was like, why the fuck is Sanjit knocking on my door? Okay, and I texted him saying, bro, I'll wake up later. It's early in the morning. Go back to sleep. And then that person kept knocking. And then I heard someone talking on the outside. Mm. But I didn't want to think about it. When I woke up in the morning, I went outside and I saw my managers, my team, everyone. Like there was like 10 people in my living room. Mm. And uh, there was this big like serious meeting going on. Because some stalker girl had come into my house at 7 in the morning. She was knocking on like my oh, door. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, so this this kind of stuff happens like very, very intense. Oh, this is like one of the stories. There are there are things like this that happen. Like that, there are lots of. There there are people who think that they're in a relationship with you. So I've had, yeah. I've had someone like message me for like the last two or three years. Like, what if I put on social media? She'd be like, Oh, why didn't you meet me today? I was mm. waiting for you. It's like, I don't know this person, <laughs> man. <laughs> <Literally right over. laughs> that's <laughs> consistent, bro. Like that's every single day. But it's a mental years. illness. It's a mental illness yeah. where people feel so like that they're associated. Like level shit. Bro. Where they're associated yeah, with. Th there's a bunch of this, and I understand it's coming from a place of love because with content, like they really get to know you as a person. Mm. But uh, it it can get intrusive. Yeah. But but no complaints. Fuck it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. No, that's the craziest thing which, which you discover is like when someone comes up to you and they s know so much about you and this is the first time you're meeting that person. So I, I, I hear you yeah. and I agree and I, I can totally relate with this thought and eight years in, this same thought becomes so normalized that you begin to think that you're fucking losing your mind. Hmm. And that's honestly the state I'm in, bro. And there's like a bunch of these thoughts that initially as a content creator, you discover that, oh, this is weird. And then it becomes a normalized part of your life. Yeah. So, 
yeah i think it leads you to uh, some sort of eccentricity or madness bro how do you stay humble then after that because if that was if that is normalized though you think you're the shit at all times everyone knows you dude i've had my phases man like of being a chuth <laughs> basically <laughs> do tell us <laughs> <laughs> should i have gotten you on then then <laughs> this is like 2 3 years ago dude but like i have had my phases of being a chuth fortunately my my bros from college are still my bros hmm. so they'll point it out one of them is my co-founder you know yeah yeah like i've been hanging out with him since like he was 18 i was like 19 so people like if, if you stick to your original crew they'll they'll enjoy you okay usually yeah, they, like tell you bro relax they keep you in check yeah, yeah. they're being a dick mm-hmm. like yeah and i've had like a bunch of people around me worked with me of like 5 6 years so i think now i've just honestly at this phase i'm really busy so i don't think there's room to think about how cool i am and all that i just want to get my work done i want to finish this off and i want to move to goa yeah but what would you do if you were, you're not doing this dude i want like one year off cuz i've not got a break since college hmm. like i've been grinding like a chut mari ka like since yeah. <laughs> since 22 just it's and i'm not i'm not trying to suck my own dick okay like but like it's just like uh, 22 to 25 running english channel two videos a week 25 till now running a hindi channel two more videos a week so from the age of 25 i've been releasing four things every week hmm. y'all are like the only podcasters where i see both consistency and an increase in quality Hmm. Uh, like in the country, so yeah. I wanted to be on this show and and like, thank uh, you, man. Thank yeah, you and uh, like in terms of even even like like the way four of y'all interacting, the way y'all navigate, con- like y'all really enjoy the art form, and I think this art form it's just beginning in India. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, if y'all if y'all I mean it's a very Dada Ji Gyan tip, but if y'all switch to Hindi, hmm. things will grow like ten x faster. Also, we've yeah. thought about that. There is a problem with that though. The kind of things we say, if we say it in Hindi. Sounds damn bad. It's crass. Eh? Yeah. See, so, uh, it's for y'all to like navigate, man. Yeah, like I don't think we'd be able to do it. I think my thoughts are in English, so it would. I've tried speaking in Hindi a lot, yeah. but it just doesn't feel the same. <laughs> like, eh, bro? Around bro. the house, also, I've switched to Hindi completely just to get more comfortable with it. Mm. And Hindi is not even my like no, no, second Hindi. language. Dude, English content for the money, Hindi content for the power. Mm. So whenever you wanna. Do that number and power switch. Mm. Consider Hindi. Yeah. Uh, you say power. What does that entail? Bro, like, uh, so I think there's three <coughs> different factors which are a result of content creation. Money is the first one. Fame is the second. Fame is what like people just recognizing recognizing you. Uh, power is this. There's two aspects of power. Okay, like the geopolitical definition is. uh obedience like in terms mm. of you can get a large number of people to obey you as a youtuber i don't give a fuck i don't want anyone to obey yeah. me mm. but power is actually influencing someone's heart it's more than fame so i don't know if you'll want to go down that path because there is at at some point fame money it feels empty after mm. after a point mm. and then you want you want something to come out of your work like you want your work to be doing something more than just giving you money and fame It'll become a natural need going forward. And you're saying you haven't found that something yet, or what? Yeah. That well, he's saying that's, he why he's that's, okay, that's why he switched up. Now. You need to start listening, bro. No, I do. I switched to Hindi <laughs> because I wanted numbers. Okay. Like, uh, so I couldn't. Um, I mean, conversationally, I could speak Hindi, but I couldn't do content. Uh, and Geo came. Uh, like Geo became a thing in India, hmm. bro. And I saw like channels going from zero to like a million subs in two months, three months, yeah. and I'm like, bro, I'm fucking grinding. You're doing very detailed content, but it's in English. Mm-hmm. So for six months, every week I tried recording a Hindi video, couldn't record, couldn't record. And the, in the sixth month, I was able to record one full Hindi video, which was sort of okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, What do you mean you couldn't record? Like you weren't? Do I just wasn't able to like form sentences in? So you've spoken English throughout, like growing up. More or less, but like. I mean, conversationally, you you can speak Hindi, but to speak to a camera huh. is difficult. To speak in a podcast huh. is difficult. Right. Yeah. Huh. Like, as in th- that initial phase is difficult. I felt like my Hindi improved only once the Hindi podcast began. Yeah. Because then you're really forced to be able to like connect to your Hindi speaking guest, etc. But yeah. it's been the biggest regret of my career not to do Hindi earlier. I I don't mean to like uh, preach to you guys or anything. Oh. But just for me personally, for dude, I began this. 
career for the sake of business for money for fame and if those are your two goals then you should be doing hindi mm-hmm. they are two out and out goals in this country yeah aaj se hindi mein baat karenge bhai chalo abhi ye episode se hindi yeah but how do you decide whether to do an episode in hindi or english based on the guest what they are comfortable with uh, usually like you can tell what the better languages hmm. like uh, you can tell what someone's thinking languages yeah. and the the other angle is hindi the conversations are more emotional yeah so if yeah, like i've I, seen <laughs> <laughs> and you add the background music also in the <laughs> where it makes it even i more. i okay this is, this is i'm not in bro okay, i have a big team mm. at dio biceps and i am responsible for, for sitting in front of my guest talking to them before the show shooting and telling my producer that this is how i think it should be packaged and then mm. i move on to the next conversation and if after it's uploaded i feel that no no the thumbnail is not right or the title's not right i'll tell my title and thumbnail people mm. that just get this done that's all yeah. i do in terms of running the podcast and that's a conscious decision because i don't want to take up too many things yeah guys i want to be there <laughs> <laughs> soon <laughs> yeah because right now for us it's damp like hands on keep doing like and it, it it should be that way bro. yeah yeah, yeah. cuz then you have control over and you figure out a style you figure out what your vibe is yeah and then they can just carry yeah. it forward now tomorrow if you were to do an episode with virat would you do it in hindi or english i f- i've thought about this and i don't know man and the day i get kohli one of the two podcasts will stop so wow. like that, that's english his english will stop like i i don't think i'll stop hindi that's your dream guest dude it's like my uh, contract to the universe in terms of send me virat that's my mm. message to like slow down and i think it'll happen it'll happen samne se it's How? like peaking do you think if you get virat it's dude i i won't summit? maybe man um, maybe i'm also looking for an excuse to just stop yeah you <laughs> like told us like thrice <laughs> now you've said this virat will never come this ka bandh ho gaya so content going he he'll, he'll, he'll come bro he'll come when the time is right how was yeah. how was it meeting him very intense um uh, you knew you were going to meet him or he just yeah bro so <laughs> <laughs> you're He's surrounded to him. oh okay okay i don't know <laughs> uh I, but i didn't know i'll get to like chill like not chill but whatever just be in the same room as him and all there's like a small after party after mm. the main event uh i know his manager fairly well he's a bro and uh, he took me into that post party room with my guys that was weird bro because you're you're in the same room as the guy who is like literally influenced like the last 12 13 years of your yeah. life like the one or oh, is he's your biggest inspiration yeah bro since before content like like everything i've had i've spoken about all this chutia giri a lot yeah, before yeah. Yeah. in terms of the alcoholism phase yeah, and yeah. drug phase and everything i swear to god virat kohli was like the reason that you know i i got out of it so when you see him in front of you that's very intense as an experience and the thing is the most famous people always want you to treat them like bros and want you to treat them like they're not famous yeah and i know this because i've been around really really famous people for a while now but i couldn't not treat him like he's just a normal person yeah yeah i mean you'll see i i can't yeah, even yeah. yeah man it's hard not to put him on a pedestal right what did you It's say to him you were like hi <laughs> voice was <laughs> quivering bro hi <laughs> no bro <laughs> like it, so uh he had like like i know he i know that both uh, him and anushka watched the show um because gagan had told me this and um, i didn't have to like introduce like my i didn't oh. have to say oh i'm be a wise i run like a youtube channel he said oh mr alabadia <laughs> and i shat myself just a little bit koli knows me that's but i was like hey hey virat <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how much it means for me to meet you and he was very chill and then we did that handshake that's become like a clip and uh, Anushka and him together are very warm bro they're very like yeah. real people even in person all those memes made about them with the memes are showcasing how real they are they're actually that real mm. uh the energy is that real and then I'll tell you what bro like when you're top rung famous like cricketers or like the top bollywood actors you're dealing with fame on a daily basis so you very quickly pick up how to read other people's energies mm-hmm. like if anyone's approaching you you just know what energy that person's going to bring and i've seen this with like all the top cricketers all the top bollywood people etc yeah. um so 
you could tell that they were just picking up energies around them and if the two of them are in any room the whole room gravitates towards them mm. right. like there's no bigger celebrities than them honestly in the country right now so they were conscious and they wanted to i think they wanted to have conversation but uh, couldn't speak properly that day but he said that uh, bro i want to come to your studio at some point so i said chalo welcome bro <laughs> <laughs> take my seat live live in my house i don't give a shit so yeah good good so life it's on moment. the table then like it, it might we it, might see that it'll, it'll happen when the time is right with the uh, three format cricketers they too busy honestly yeah, yeah like yeah. they've got too much cricket to play and when they in the off season they've got too much money to make because mm-hmm. every hour is like making them crores so like i don't blame them for yeah, yeah. not being able to but it's rare for cricketers to do like podcasts and just go on interviews because they have like because of coffee with karan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> i think they have kind of fucked it up for the rest of them but kl rahul came so he was yeah. like bro oh, like i think he wouldn't do a show like this ever after coffee i think i think culture is changing dude like i know that mm. they all watch a lot of podcasts yeah. they watch a lot of joe rogan probably watch a lot of untriggered <laughs> <laughs> no but dude I, th- i think youtube is becoming like a podcasting platform now honestly yeah. it's becoming either like a shorts thing or it's becoming like a video podcast it's platform. the best like i at night when i go to my room and i want to watch something i try going on netflix and prime or whatever i end up on youtube only like watching some video or some podcast like it's just better content there's so much variety this i it evolves yeah. quicker right youtube evolves so quickly because <clears throat> they make videos in two days put it out instantly when they're making a show it's relevant at that time then it comes out after two years and then it's not relevant anymore so like you're getting better content in general i feel yeah man uh i have no idea where youtube is going for like mm. the first time in i don't know how long and i think like people your age have a much better incline yeah. uh might also be because i've been doing youtube for a bit now but i legit don't have that incline towards what to do over the next year i just know there's momentum with trs so i'm going to continue and then i'm going to be stopping at some point but you guys i, f- I feel the younger you are the better your intuition is with social media always mm-hmm, yeah you just know what's going to work which is why do you do you all think like films are going to be a thing like do you all think the film industry is all over the world will bounce back the f- big films i feel like the franchises will still like marvel is going to do well for a while but then it's like the big films barbie is coming openheimer is coming you know people are going to go watch these grand films but it's like the weekly films that have to come out like every friday movies have to come out there to all going on ott yeah that soon die down there are other categories that's what we discussed almost weekly uh, what Yeah, no, but that's the big films again. Like, yeah. Patan is always going to do well, no matter when it comes out. So that's what I something think. like Karan Johar is putting out now. So he's trying to revive it, you know, with like a big production. I I don't know shit about you're films, not bro. <laughs> like I'm I'm not in sync with the film world at all, honestly. Oh, that's I'm not I'm not like holding back to protect <laughs> my relationship with Karan Johar <laughs> or anything like that. I no, I can't you talk to all these actors so we would assume yeah, like your I am just a good podcaster dude. Mm. Yeah, I don't know anything about films. I used to when I was a kid and just I don't know it's not been an interest in like a very long time. Okay, so what do you watch? Like uh, to kill time. Like what content do I consume? I I can... <laughs> I have I have seen some of episodes dude. Uh I really enjoy podcasts dude. I um I've, I'm trying to get back into actually gaming myself and not making gaming content. Mm. The thought crossed my head. I bought a PlayStation. My first thought was, "Fuck, I should be recording this and starting a new channel." Yeah. And then I realized, "No, no, no. I have to take a step back from work." So I like spending like my free time playing Skyrim and shit. Do you know what Skyrim yeah. is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm a very nerdy person, dude, and I have always had an attention span problem, and it's gotten way worse with like. short content yeah. so i think games are the only things that can like properly keep me gripped entertainment yeah. wise but the 30 year old answer is i've started valuing my social life a lot more mm-hmm. in terms of i go i make an effort to go out and meet new people etc so if i have free time my first priority is can i go meet someone yeah who's not going to be a podcast guest that's another angle just to hang out like yeah bro yeah. has it changed the way you uh like have a conversation with someone ki okay ye guest guest ke taraf se aaya so then i'm going to treat this as a guest on my show and that changes the way you approach the conversation with the person when i meet someone socially yeah. do i talk to them 
yeah does it feel like because you are you're doing this on such a like efficient you you've got you know, how many episodes are you releasing every week four episodes every week and then you've got different guests on a, on a regular basis you're such a polite guy bro <laughs> <laughs> my mom my mom my, i told my mom that we were doing this and she was like okay please be your calm self <laughs> don't misbehave no bro chill chill uh, chill i'm fucking yeah. around I think he's trying to ask you: Is your on-screen personality the same? Yeah, yeah. do conversations that happen uh, with the camera on? Is it the same way when I it's mean, off? I uh, mean, you guys would know that. Like, I don't know how I am mm. off camera, honestly. But I think if you're releasing that much content, if you're not yourself, that's a problem. Like, that'll mm. become a problem. Mm. I've seen that with a lot of YouTubers, dude. Like, if if they go away from who they are, uh, people start seeing through it on online. And by YouTubers, I mean social media people, who are like eight years. So. If your career is in this industry, the more authentic you are, mm. the better. That's what they say. Oh, authenticity sells, but it's true. Mm. Long term, the audience really gets to know who you are, and they'll gravitate towards you or like leave you based right. on that. Uh, wait, so, so yeah. you're really like <laughs> like this? <laughs> <laughs> you're. I mean, Amir was waiting to say this. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Like I assumed, like for example, when you say I don't drink, that's just something. people say like oh, i no. say it because i don't want to drink with anyone <laughs> like i'll choose if i want to drink with someone yeah. so you actually don't drink you actually don't i have drank a lot until 2018 and mm. like i've done everything you can think of till 2018 mm -hmm. uh i began like a whole advanced yoga you know this martial arts and yeah. then if you want like formal training you follow rules yeah, yeah. and all that yoga works the same way at some point if you go for like the advanced version of it you cannot uh, do a lot of things you can't eat meat you can't uh, drink you can't smoke pot you can't smoke cigarettes yeah. you 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 ideally shouldn't even be eating junk food and all that mm. so i've not reached that point where i've cut out like junk food but at some point even that'll go and okay. the, it's it's the legitimate truth of my life but i know how uh, vanilla it sounds but mm. it's it's kind of like a mental martial arts reason behind it got it So wait, if you are with someone and they drink, I vibe hard because that's the closest I can get to drinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you don't get annoyed when the girl gets like really drunk and when the girl out. gets <laughs> really drunk. If you're, when I said someone, I meant like a girl. Yeah. I love being around people who drink mm -hmm. because um, one, because I think the more yoga you do, the more empathetic you become. So I can almost feel the highs. Mm -hmm. And two, like uh, just I love being around. Pakari, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like I love people messing around. Yeah. I miss like what college was like, happier, simpler times. What's the? Tell us like a wild, wild story from college, from this up to 2018, where you said you were like fucking like around. A drinking and, story. Drinking, whatever, whatever else you've done. Drinking, <laughs> gambling. <laughs> Gambling. I, don't, I, don't I feel like he's done gambling. No, 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 Never. Gambling, bro. <laughs> I'm a Mahabharat fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is an intricate layered reference. I did. That's seriously the reason I've never like gone to a casino, dude. Because my mom always told me that see they gambled and they. <laughs> this is what happened. Bro, <laughs> very like dharmic family, bro. So, uh, no, I'm not gambled. A crazy drinking story, bro. Uh, the the ones that would be interesting enough, I will not say because uh -huh. I am PR trained. Yeah. That'll uh, be off camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> this this part uh, can be edited out. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But I remember getting people really smashed, bro. I was that like bad influence scene. Oh, oh the you did that. Guy. You did yeah. that. Oh, <laughs> As in, you know, you take those pointy you. ass uh, uh, bottle caps yeah, on yeah, the small yeah, yeah. bottle. Like, hey, <laughs> And like you get people drunk. Like I used to get a trip out of getting my juniors to do bad shit mm. uh, for the first time. Like my friends' parents used to not let them hang out with me because like I was that guy. God. Yeah, yeah. Happily so, and that's why it's damn weird when I meet them now because they're all fucked up and they're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking <laughs> all in jail or something. <laughs> Who's laughing at this guy? <laughs> <laughs> guys, abuse me, bro. <laughs> Like they can't believe that it's it's the same. The tables person. have turned now. Yeah, but I was a <laughs> fucked up college student. <laughs> <laughs> I've done like very weird shit in college. So yeah. Like what? Like what? Give us one. Ah, uh, just. Dude, so I went through your Instagram today. And <laughs> today. <laughs> what is like that? Like this pure biceps rabbit hole that I got into. <laughs> and i found one like addiction story highlights ka one part i found in which you specified <laughs> fifa 10 as your addiction like <laughs> as a sport game fifa 10 i fuck with that bro <laughs> i fucking love that shit i'd fucking play fifa, fifa all day bro 
Ja, ja. Nej, jeg tror ikke, at mere end en vej Mere end en eller anden måde. I feel you, bro. Det er bro. Jeg er ikke noget. FIFA 10. Like one of us has to be nice to you. That's why you kept it next to you. Out of four people. You don't, you don't fucking with these guys? No, no, I like, I like them, bro. One guy kissed me, the other guy's hours is just like <laughs> sprouting Spreading. out. <laughs> no, I feel like yeah. I, I never engineers. Me. Oh, oh, I'm an engineer. Ah, I felt something. How? How it explains it. Bro, I look, I look for bro vibes on mm. Saturdays. Yeah. Honestly, this is they, my ideal Saturday. They say now Saturdays are for the boys. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Do they say that? Boys. <laughs> <only sing. laughs> Me. That's that's why I follow your podcast. Also, I feel like I'm in college again or some shit. Yeah, a lot of people say that. They're like. Uh, we lost touch with our friends so we watch you yeah. and then i would like step outside bro like <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro like i i mean like i used to see andrew schultz stuff until mm. i found you guys and i don't i mean it's too american for me now oh. yeah yeah okay. so like how you go into uh, desi hip hop yeah yeah, uh, yeah. same by like, you listen to like any indian rappers i i started listening to stan after i had him on the show bro mm. and i got really into stan mm. okay so honestly i'm not making this up i used to rap a little bit when i was a kid Okay. and it's been like a very dormant dream to actually become a rapper uh, i'm a big fan of this guy called lil dicky hmm. oh dude lil dicky yeah. yeah. watch his show it's called dave, dave. Yeah. okay yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so uh, bro when i started watching dave apparently what was happening was that um i was i was this is in like 2021 okay i was running out of instagram content i didn't know what to put up so i went to so i was one day and the manager there said she was bitching about in- instagram influencers and i was like that's cool i don't mind but what would you have them rather do so mm. she's like where are all the poets so i was like fuck it i think i could write poetry so i started writing some really shit poetry yeah. and then over the years i've like worked on it up to a point where i feel like i can actually write good shit now mm. and I've, i'm learning how to rap i mean learning how to write rap rhymes uh i would love to deep dive into it at least as a writer if not a rapper but i can't because my hands are tied through the show yeah like there's too many shoots happening and i've had this conversation with my team but i want to take a step back and i want to do something new creatively mm. but i can't because money mm. and momentum so so you've been writing though like yeah yeah, yeah. spit spit <laughs> 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 no no too too early right now but i can right. i can rap i understand flows i understand like uh how to write good lyrics dude Mm. Yeah there's an art to it and if i know that if i chase something creative which i'm actually into like podcasting i'll yeah. go to like the depth of it got it hindi english whatever so i don't know let's see so what you like you like stan's writing bro i love stan's <laughs> i love stan's no, I, flow I, I, stan's uh, flow yeah. is like yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah like he i think he him and emmy way these two guys ka flow and uh, writing wise i really like divine i really like um, I I really like Lil Dicky dude like yeah. if you get into his lyrics yeah. it's too intricate like yeah. um, he rhymes hypotenuse and all with like things yeah. so he's a really good rapper it's just that he's a funny rapper yeah. so it kind of gets lost in that people yeah. just take hmm. it as a joke but he's not released actually, new music in a while now what i he's think he's putting out an album or something he's bro. been doing the show right the show is what he's doing yeah. with music like that is like you can't put out too much of it before it gets like okay we got it mm-hmm. like you say yeah. funny stuff okay cool I'm super into like this guy called Jack Harlow also lately yeah. bro like both in terms of I don't think he's a great lyrics guy but like his flow is very sick and yeah. I think he's got that whole pop star grind thing that Drake had young Drake and yeah and he's very more like likable I feel like Than he's Drake? Ju- yeah bro I I don't know if you guys are too young you know what like 2002 2003 no bro like, 98 no bro 98 oh, okay so you all probably seen have you all seen young Drake like when yeah, Drake was yeah. yeah okay So I used to love Young Drake bro because there was a lot of motivation positivity into in his music and I feel he slept around so <laughs> much I have nothing else to talk about <laughs> like it's the same themes now yeah. uh and he's become his music is I still listen to all of Drake's music even now but it's a little too dark for me mm-hmm. but I still listen to it because I love Drake for what he is and uh then parallelly like I mean I've been listening to Drake since college okay uh and from 2015 once the youtube stuff started i started seeing kind of what fame is like nothing like drake's fame and i don't yeah. think i'd ever want that as well but i've understood where that darkness came from mm-hmm. and i can feel it like kind of creeping into my life as well yeah. especially with like 
Dude, I mean, pod, this whole conversation about podcasting taking off in the country. I used, I've been doing it for like four years, and I only feel things have taken off in the last six months. Like mm. this has been, this is the right time, and I can feel that surge of fame, and I don't know how much I like it. And I'm not saying that as a poor little rich boy. No, bro. Sympathy thing. It's, it's. I get it, bro. <laughs> 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 no, but like to whatever level of getting recognized and all, I already don't like it. So yeah. I don't know how I would feel if it just keeps adding and adding. Is, yeah. yeah, like right, last night we went out. I was out for half an hour and I just wanted to do like. Yeah, that, bro, this happens yeah. a lot. Like the place where we went, it was all people our age, so the like, yeah, l- likelihood of them knowing us was high. Yeah. So I w- I was out after half an hour. I was yeah. like, this is not fun. Um. I genuinely like. I'm very grateful for like fame and like I'm getting exactly what I began my career for. uh but i miss anonymity a lot dude like mm. like in terms of i have a place i go to in south goa when i'm completely saturated mm. south goa parts of it are legitimately like extremely rural so like mm. no one knows you and it's on the beach it's in the middle of nature no one recognizes you there and i live for those that that one week i get after every like 3 4 months yeah. because anonymity becomes a drug after a point like yeah. you usually you'll see this more and more going forward mm. You like going to Goa a lot. Uh, I like going to that part of South mm. Goa. Yeah, I don't like going to Goa a lot, bro. Now, so where's where's that part in South <laughs> Goa? <laughs> you won't, you won't be rural anymore. <laughs> yeah, bro. In Goa, there's always places that people just start finding out. Then they start putting yeah. it on Quora. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I went here and it was very secure. Ten quiet now, beaches in Goa. Uh, yeah, then hundred thousand views on that thread. <laughs> <laughs> no, and now I mean, yeah, I protect what I value. Yeah, which is why like I, I had a I had a friend man. Um, he's this uh, very cool life story. Uh, he's he's like a motivational speaker, but in Germany, and he's seen a lot. He was he were do you all follow football? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you all know Boatengs, the Boateng <laughs> yeah. brothers. Yeah. Yes. So he was um, like he was being coached along with Kevin Prince and Jerome Boateng. Okay. Um, and he got a really bad foot injury or knee injury. So he switched to basketball when he was 15, and he was all he almost got drafted into the NBA. Damn. So he's excelled in football, basketball, and then he didn't actually end up getting drafted. So he learned finance, and now he handles uh, finances for the Boatengs and all these <laughs> other athletes Crazy. from both NBA and football. Mm-hmm. So he has a lot of perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, he best conversations of my life I have with that guy. Okay, his name's Thaddeus Koroma, and uh, he told me that any powerful human or any human who has uh power is one of their goals should always keep their loved ones as secret as possible because mm-hmm. that's your weak spot yeah yeah so that's become a life goal of mine bro that if i continue a material career and like if i chase power no one will know who i'm married to no one will know how many kids i have how my kids look etc then what if she says oh you're not even posting me now you get that before i get married <laughs> but yeah Yeah, have you have you ever been with someone who's like a cloud chaser? Like post me or something. Yeah, why don't you me. post me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so was uh, did you make that relationship public or no? Uh it was like one of my earlier relationships, mm. bro. So, uh, I I didn't realize that that's what was happening in while the yeah, in the moment, but then like after my friends told me that uh dude, we didn't want to tell you because you would that into it. <laughs> but Oh, yeah. That's exactly when they should tell you, na. <laughs> That's the only time they should. Bro, these fame-related friendship equations develop as the years go by, like these protocols and all that. Yeah. Mm. So now, now I know how to spot like red flags. My friends know <laughs> like how to spot red flags for me. I suppose. What would qualify as a red flag? A red flag? Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest turn off? You can tell when someone wants to be with you for the fame or money. Mm. That's your biggest turn off. Yeah. Or if they don't meditate. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. That's a bigger uh, turn off. It's, it's a it's a massive green flag if they do, but, but because if you can get yourself to sit silently for thirty minutes, it means mm. you've sorted out a lot of your own shit. Mm. So, uh, it's great if they meditate, but you want to say something? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you saw you felt something loading over. <laughs> no, always no, no. feeling things loading, bro. He always has this smirky smile, bro. When he's got something ready, na. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just waiting like for Doctor Evil, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no dude meditation is all over you you can't you can't force spiritual shit on anyone mm, yeah. which is which is why i'm like pure vegetarian 
but i don't dig when people tell someone else to quit oh. non veg because it's not oh. good or you know like push their agenda on to people i feel all these things are too personal mm. and you can't you can't like force it up upon anyone man yeah how long since you've gone vegetarian same 2018 five years yeah bro you don't miss eating meat i no? did in the two weeks i uh, like the uh, the first two weeks and then mm. just something switches but again dude that's my subjective experience and it happened cuz like i had this whole mental martial arts vibe going on which mm. i still do now there's no craving like there's never even like a thought but those two weeks i had to like do a bit of jostling okay yeah that's vegan have you tried ever yeah Doesn't i didn't i could do it like yeah. I, i like ghee and shit too much yeah so ghee paneer i am always hungry kind of i feel like i tried it but it's also like when you do try to go vegan you have to make a lot of stuff yourself <laughs> because it's not there so you have to cook for yourself and then i would just end up not eating yeah yeah bro uh, yeah. i mean okay so bys have started off as a cooking channel okay like What? yeah the, like back in the day it was like just it was a health cooking channel if you you type bys has cooking and there's just tandoori chicken <laughs> there is that's not something goat <laughs> goat shoulder oh. like all bro i've done some elaborate like cooking in my life because i was very into food thing is the outcome of this mental martial arts vibe is that your lust for good food also goes away in terms of you don't really need mm. really great tasting food that's great for me and my age because the, i've realized with time the more boring your food is the better you end up looking and if like i know i have to like sell a brand to look a certain way on screen so helps me like it helps mm. me just like delete my need for like a burger or a pizza hmm god so it's like to keep yourself in shape and like look a certain way yeah how many haircuts do you get a month i'm going to take the conversation to some more sexual place i mean no yaar i'm just i'm asking stuff that i'm curious about i'm so. a very normal dude uh i get the same number of haircuts that you do bro hmm. i i don't dig the amount of frills that get attached to media careers in terms of like having fancy cars having like non uh, fast fashion clothes and i don't vouch for fast fashion it's bad for the environment etc etc yeah. see blah blah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad for the environment or whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's terrible for the environment bro um but um there's too many frills bro like mm. i feel the content creation industry is like a little bit it's turning into like a very mainstream frills oriented thing I mean, yeah. it, it it had to at some point as a natural progression of things. So yeah. uh, for me, bro, like I I I love doing like normal shit, like just getting a haircut at a local place. Everyone can just they have had the same haircut for like seven years, bro. But would you risk it, like if I I find my standard guys hmm. and I explain to them in detail. I say, "Yeah, say, one dam short, kar do, hmm. or square shape, short." Do. <laughs> <laughs> so you have not been loyal to your barber. <laughs> uh, I have two three. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I don't like no. him. He said he's inspired by Drake, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but guys have that thing, bro. Like yeah. they get too emotionally. No, no, I, 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 I hear you. I just have two or three guys that I have equations with. Mm-hmm. I'm a poly, poly amorous, <laughs> poly barbarous, poly barbarous. Who you? Are you are you guys getting the content you all want from the sea? Bro, I'm, I'm half in content creator zone with you all now. Nahi nahi bro, aisa nahi hai. If okay. you sir will talk na, we'll talk we'll, whatever yeah, comes out. Yeah, we're having fun. Aren't you having fun? Okay, I, this yeah. is not how I podcast. Just like you all have a very different process. What do you do? Like yeah, you try that? to get them to say something. Oh, bro, you I have, have things you know you want to talk about. Uh, uh yeah, mean. usually. Or at least like a topic I stick to. Mm-hmm. You know, I try pulling it back. Um Maybe the audiences I'm trying to reach out to is like very different, bro. My my audience is very like, hey, make my uh, time spent watching this worth it, and it's mm-hmm. always been that. Like at B O Y S apps, when we were just doing fitness videos, yeah. I had to think about every sentence I was putting into like the video, bro. That's a very good way to go about it because you're valuing your audience's time. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. I mean, it's, just, it's the system I followed for commercial infotainment style growth. Mm-hmm. because you can grow businesses out of good infotainment brands yeah <clears throat> got it i i think like you can keep switching your genre but that core of what you are as a content creator has to stay 
somewhat the same so mine's always been like ensure the some value in like every sentence mm. so when i'm podcasting with someone bro i'm pretty like i i can be free flowing with some people if they're famous enough mm. but otherwise like i try cons- like restricting myself mm. what are what are those episodes like when you're talking about like aliens or whatever supernatural like how do you get in that zone where you're are you genuinely that curious about all the stuff or it's just like yeah, i know the audience likes it so i have to do it and this yeah, is what it is yeah i've always been curious about these things since i was a kid i'm just getting a chance to express myself now hmm. so that's why it's coming out this much and it's great for the subscribers and views yeah <laughs> so i'm very aware of that bro yeah. nothing that comes out of my mouth is not for views or subscribers clip <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. Boom>. that <laughs> <laughs> like I am very focused on growing like uh, like and I'll do anything to grow it's working I won't do anything to grow I'm be on train but I'm very hell bent on like growing bro and I used to have a very romantic outlook on content with mm. even with podcasting in the middle I had this one phase during covid where I became like super knowledgeable about stuff and went hyper niche mm. and then I realized I'm just engaging in some kind of mental masturbation there yeah, like yeah. Was, oh this is so smart so you masturbate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got it we got it <laughs> we got it <laughs> <laughs> M- myth pat had yeah. told me uh that <laughs> <laughs> myth pat had told me that bro you have to create podcasts that will end up getting views mm. and i disagreed with him first i said no 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 i'm 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 old enough now and my focus is business and i just want that niche audience etc then you started that hindi channel no no this is the hindi channel started the same <laughs> Uh, it started with the same perspective bro yeah. that i want like entertainment audiences he told me switch to just ensuring every piece works bro best best content creation advice i've ever gotten yeah so uh, that's the system i follow now so the alien yeti bhoot everything i know it works and i will keep doing it because mm. i know i'll grow okay so have you actually been with like a haunted lady? yeah, yeah. I, really <laughs> I not no story that I've said on the show huh. has ever been made up because if you try making up a story, people get to know. Yeah, that's I just mean, the nature of podcast. They get the holes. Uh, I've spoken about it enough. That's why I'm not gonna relay like hmm. stories again yeah. here. Which But story is this? The one that clapping the, one. Clapping. Do you remember the clapping story? What I've only clapping? seen one. Whether how many other? <laughs> I have seen one. There's, like, there's one very famous one. There's a lot more huh. than I've spoken on the show. cuz i've always been interested in these things and i've gone out looking for experiences when i'm traveling when i'm like out in bombay i've always gone looking for experiences even as a content creator cuz i feel that you get inspired to create something when something slightly fucked up happens to you mm. so i would look for mm. that fucked up experience so you've gone around like looking for ghosts and shit i have done a lot of weird shit have you been affected i've had some weird experiences dude i've gone into like um I may not be able to talk about it, but I've gone into like these very occult temples in like Banaras, and mm-hmm. I've had like very deep conversations with like people who are practitioners there. Mm-hmm. I've I've had, if I've had like X amount of experiences, only twenty percent of those make it to the show. Like oh. my team will edit it out. They'll be like, no, this is like too much for the internet, and like too graphic, too uh, woo woo, because mm. like I know how people perceive these things. There's like you can never convince a skeptic. about these things yeah that's perfectly fine uh, i also want to get cabinet ministers on my show i also want to get sports stars on my show mm. bro when the when this uh, god of jay, jay shankar on we to lost it only this has happened yeah. it was wild thank congratulations on oh, that thank you bro my dad was like what the hell dude i thought you said this guy sucked dude this guy a foreign minister on the show <laughs> fucking lying to me it was wild it was wild yeah god yeah. bless pr training <laughs> <laughs> So when I first saw your stuff, my first thought was, I can't wait for these guys to discover the world of PR, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, then I, and then have to like pull back yeah. and make slightly less sexualized uh, content, etc. Yeah. I hope the PR comes before the first FIR, because <laughs> <laughs> like, then it'll be a little too late to get PR training. Oh man, it's no, the, it's, the, it's, the, a, it's a trade-off you make. Yeah, the, the more mainstream you want to become, and therefore the more commercially successful you want to become. Mm. the less uh dank you can be mm. and it's the job of a good quality pr professional to tell you to shut the fuck up sometimes yeah yeah you've seen the dank stuff w- with you in it right 
आई सीक्रेटली फॉलो एवरी लाइक मैनी डैंक मीम पेजेस वेर आई कॉन्ट डबल टैप ऑन थिंग्स बिकॉज आई हैव डबल टैप ऑन थिंग्स एंड इट्स बिकम अ पी आर मीटिंग दैट ब्रोक डोंट लाइक दिस थिंग्स ओके टू से दिस बिकॉज I I want to keep it real, but also my hands are tied because yeah. I run like three businesses behind yeah. your biceps. So uh, that's why you make a fake account. Now. I was just about to say. Yeah. Do you not have one? The account that I need. I fake account man. I need. So, bro. So you stock access with your main account. <laughs> with like the, the blue tick that comes. I have a, I have a system. Of blocking anyone like that, I've recently broken up with. Oh, Man. like right after. Yeah, I'm with you on that. See? Who have you ever blocked? For the FIFA for then the and block in next. No, for the at least for the like time being, at least for a couple of weeks or a month. Yeah. And then you, you get your shit together. together. Yeah, no woman, no cry. <laughs> only, only cry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, bro, this is a system that works for me, man. Hmm. No, I get that system, and I know it works, but then. Like <laughs> how do I stalk if I have to? No, it's not even about stalking. If you block, then you're kind of burning a bridge. And then two weeks later at two a.m. you can't text them. <laughs> <Be> like, <laughs> Hi. नहीं करना चाहिए इसलिए तो नहीं. You left your T-shirt at my place. <laughs> Please come collect it. Nah. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> It's urgent. <laughs> at two in the morning. <laughs> your T-shirt <laughs> is urgent, bro. जल्दी से आके ले ले. Have you had your toxic boy phase? Give me like more reference point. What like what? Drake or like <laughs> like just yeah, sleeping around? Be, yeah, no, like that. No, he said and, like, that. Like gaslighting said. women. That's where it is. What did you say? That's where it's at. I said that's how. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome <laughs> <laughs> I have been like very pissed off with a few of my breakups, and I've held on to like that anger for a bit, turned it into content also, and then regretted it as I've grown older and realized that everyone's on their own journey. And even if someone makes a mistake, it's fine, bro. Like the Dada Ji input here is there's a PR trade. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, bro. This is like the mental martial arts. I tell you what, uh, it's very Dada Ji, but it's too fucking true. Like the faster you forgive everyone you've ever held anything against, the lighter you feel about yourself. You stop taking yourself that seriously. So all this, like the reason this guy used to like diss me, like <laughs> uh, earlier with like, hey, Chutia, <laughs> what motivation speaker? Uh, somewhere the content would be written from a place of not having forgiven people from my past. Mm. So that anger and intensity would make it to the content. And then you're attracting more of Krishna energy in your life. <laughs> I don't mean Harmic Krishna. I mean this Krishna. I'm kidding, bro. Like, no, no, no. I was. I just uh, started thinking about like what I said and when I said it, and what I, was I uh, completely am for what you said, uh, and I'll tell you why. With okay. with which one? Because there's, <laughs> there's a lot. He said he wants to. He said he wants to kill you. Even I've lost. <laughs> even I've lost. Uh, No, yeah. no, it's it's chill. Like as in, th- I I know the kind of criticism I get or like the kind of hate that's directed towards me, and that's perfectly fine because it's being directed towards beer biceps and not yeah. the guy Ranveer, yeah. and I'm very chill with that. Uh, but my point of saying all this was that, dude, I was I've just gotten progressively less angry as a person as I've grown older, and I think that's a that's a really important journey for like mm. any guy. I've just had it early on in life. Maybe because of feedback loops. Like when if if people are criticizing your content or your work, yeah. it's good. This will actually help you improve into the next phase, but if they're criticizing you, then there's probably a problem with you or them. Hmm. So it's cool. But you've never clapped back at someone who said something about you online, like a response. In private, in private, yeah, because I was angry when I was younger, bro. Uh-huh. Mm. But like younger, like when I was like twenty six, twenty seven is the last time I remember actually getting riled up about it. And I just had like really calm, introverted people around me mm. to say, "No, no, chill, chill." What was said, like who? Well, this who, person was. Who was said? <laughs> what, who, yeah, what said. got got under your skin? Um, uh, bro, okay, I'll tell you what gets under my skin. When um, someone's very chill in person, and then like behind your back, like things will travel back to you. Mm. There's a lot of that in this industry, where people are like extremely polite and friendly, uh, in person, and then like behind your back, it's it's like a whole murky story. Like us, how we are with you right now? No, dude, y'all are y'all are chill. Like, as in, it's it's a lot of penis energy in this room. Yeah. It's true penis energy. <laughs> There's a lot of hella cock in here. Uh, 
throwing hands, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. That's some Gen Z saying. No, like, hands is like, th- is like start a like fight. Start oh, yeah, yeah. In, in college, yeah. Beat the fuck uh, out dude, of I am, I'm a trained martial artist. I can like, I can defend myself. You know who else is a trained martial artist? Uh, I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you want to make it happen? <laughs> you want to make it happen? Bro, the first boxing match. YouTube boxing. <laughs> oh. I, tried, dude, I, I, I trained in judo. Uh, at like a fairly decent level, I reached state and everything, and I was a good judoka. And at around 16, um, so in judo, there's this judo matches like like randori, it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, bro, I started hating inflicting pain on like my opponent. Like it just became like oh, a. That's very similar for me. Also. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's something someone who's, who's done martial arts can yeah sort of relate with. I I re- for me it, like sorry to cut you, but no, bro. what I felt was. After a certain point, there was a certain amount of viciousness that you yeah. needed to have. Yeah. Because when you're in a predicament where you're in a bout and the referee's like not jumped in, but you know that guy doesn't have enough in him to like yeah. get back up. And then your job is to go and hit him while he's down. Yeah. It's pretty sick. Yeah. To bro, think about. M- my hands would like turn into jelly. Like I just couldn't. Uh. It was like I'm not going to hit this guy. Yeah. Uh, and I, I took a step back from judo because of that. Why are we talking about this? And then when I was 19, during my alcohol phase, I got into like what would count as a bar fight in some club. Some guy Let's just randomly picked up a fight. I hit <laughs> there all my martial arts training came out because he hit me first. For uh, no reason? Or just like some... Uh, I don't remember now. Mm. I don't remember what the exact reason was, but I remember not being at fault. And I took the first punch. <laughs> 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 These guys just laugh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> huh? No, that, Did but you that's. Scratch yourself or something? No, <laughs> no, I'm laughing because you said I just remember I wasn't at fault. That's what I remember I wasn't at fault, <laughs> and he hit me. Uh, I didn't retaliate. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Why are you doing that? And he came and hit me again, and I blocked it and I hit him back. And then three other guys came, started beating me up, and I got beaten up. And the next thing I remember, because I wasn't in my senses, was that bouncers took me out of the club and not them because one of those guys probably knew the owner mm-hmm, or something. Mm-hmm. So my next memory is me outside the club and feeling really bad that I drank so much that I didn't register what happened. Mm. And that was a big like shift for me uh, to get me out of my like alcohol phase. I drank after that, but uh, I started uh, moving moving away from the love for alcohol after that incident. And I started lifting weights because of that because I realized, fuck, should be yeah. stronger in like a situation like that the next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all in all, it's great. Uh, but at that point, dude, that incident like had fucked me up a lot because I don't like violence. Like if you can leave like your art form yeah. because of violence being a part of it, you don't want to invite violence into your life mm. again. Uh, but you should be equipped to deal with violence. Yeah, yeah. So? that's That's something that... I feel like every man needs to realize at some point that <laughs> you need to be ready to go. You need to be ready to throw hands if I, if, I will, required, if uh, required. If required. I will never be up for a YouTube boxing <laughs> or oh, MMA. Oh man. <laughs> there is there is none there is no fun. amount of money that you know, the views, bro. The views. There is no amount of money or views that will make me inflict violence on another person again. What about Hindi commentary? <laughs> 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 English commentary and Hindi commentary. <laughs> but did you did you like watch WWE and yeah, stuff yeah, as a kid? Yeah, a lot, lot of UFC, lot of WWE. You still watch? Uh, I just follow who are the top guys now. Who has replaced John Cena and Randy Orton? Mm. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever. Yeah, he's replaced. Can you have a spirit? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. We've, <laughs> We've done the right thing. <laughs> oh, you just did the picture. You just recreated oh, the, the picture. picture. <laughs> have you seen the picture? No, no. Dude, wait, 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 wait. can we bring it out? Wait, 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 wait. So, do a, we'll do first tell, we should tell what it is. Some context. Secret it, was, Santa. it was Christmas. Oh, I saw this, I saw this. this, you this, saw this, this right? on New Year's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how my hand is like one good hand. <laughs> That's Suresh Rainer's hand, bro. <laughs> oh, <really? It's laughs> a, I, I know this photo, so yeah. Oh, we've given you Suresh Rahina's hand. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, and what so is this? At the gym or is it a club? It's supposed to be a club. I oh, guess. it's a gym. Someone's lifting weights. <laughs> oh, that's a fancy yeah, gym. Our thumbnail guy made this. <laughs> <laughs> nice, cute. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you guys should re- recreate it. <laughs> <laughs> we will after this. Hopefully. Post, post. <laughs> they did more than that, though, when he walked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, the kiss. kiss. 
I don't know. Nice. He just asked me to do it, dude. Fun energy, fun energy. Don't lie, yeah. bro. <laughs> no, you didn't hesitate, bro. Didn't, it's not like I, I, I thought about it, and then I'm like, okay, we're here already. I leaned in for the handshake. I might as well just kiss him. <laughs> 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 I wish we recorded this. <laughs> oh, it oh. felt nice. It seemed like a nice, masculine. Uh, love oriented kiss from krishna <laughs> pr team <laughs> that's just the PR. camera has <laughs> yeah. right, right, that's right. his pr version of no homo like <laughs> <laughs> i was going to say even one of my girlfriends received the same from him <laughs> <laughs> Is that what masculine warm did, energy did you guys, how do you all know each other do you all grow up together kind of bro like we, i suvian i used to play football together oh nice and, and this is like Thirteen years ago. Yeah. yeah. Do, you all, do you all play well? Yeah, pretty good. Some of us, <laughs> some of us are. Okay. You know. <laughs> we just played that footy league yeah, yeah, yeah. thingy. Right, right. Yeah. And we that was pretty good. Lost the final. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go. You reached the final. Tell us about it. Oh, uh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> really, you want to know about my sure, foot, foot, footy league? Dude, we had the best team, and <laughs> we lost. Zed uh, Darbar, uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, very well. So his team. It was the best team, dude. I'm not even kidding. Every position we had, like a good player. Everything except right side defense. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had the best right back in the league, also. By the way, we l- won every single match, but lost the final. Okay. Against the pretty bad teams, that too. Fancho's like, team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was decent, bro. They did their job well. Ha! Now, so you'll say that. What was the vibe of playing? Was the actual intensity? Or everyone was just chill. It was intense. Oh, no, surprising. Yeah, one or two झगड़े भी देखे मैंने लाइक. Yeah, yeah, there were fights. There was. Really, yeah, yeah. dude. So in one of my matches, because we scored a goal after the referee blew his whistle, as like a do, quick throw, like a quick corner taken quickly wipes. <laughs> the team walked off. Like half the team walked. अबे लाय अरे तुमने जल्दी कर लिया. Yeah, इसा इसा walk off मार दिया. Yeah, they got banned. And then what happened? They got banned. <laughs> Uh, conversation is like an ADHD conversation. Yeah. <laughs> He asked us, "How do we know each other?" And we went to footy. Yeah, we used yeah, to yeah. we used to play football. We got to know Yugu and Krishna around the same time, like after tenth grade. Yeah, after tenth. I was in again through college, football only. Ah, okay, okay. And then we just there was a bigger group, and now the four of us have stayed. Nice. Yeah, as the core. Nice. How do you all divide the money? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we need to start making <laughs> money first. Money to start dividing it. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I see you're making a lot of money, dude. Honestly. Or yeah. thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Our managers. I can't <laughs> wait, bro. <laughs> I hope the money comes <laughs> in. Yeah, but no, but for real, like the business angle is that this is like highly monetizable. Yeah. From the same brands or like sponsor. Why are we talking about like uh, brand related shit? No, it's okay. This I'll talk about. I'll speak to this with. Uh, Viraj Shet. Yeah, I'll speak to this yeah. about. <laughs> Yeah, you also play now football. I used to a lot. I've not played since I've moved to that side of town. Mm. Uh, but I'm pretty shit, dude. Like, and I, I play for fun. Like, I play for like fitness, etc. Uh, which is why I've played competitively with the All Stars, and I love both Zaid and Aways. But those guys play very intensely. Yeah, like, it is intense. They are very serious about yeah. it. Yeah. And I fuck around when I play. So, yeah. and and the guys who play with me, like Viraj, etc., etc., also fuck around when they play. Yeah. So. But I'm open to like playing with you guys at some point. Dude, let's Dango. definitely. We let's should play. play against someone. The five of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, so we yeah. Fun yeah. Game. Five I haven't, five. I haven't gone on a run in years. Bro. So you just played as a keeper. Oh, no? we can't yeah, have. Sir. We can't have one. Three bad players, bro. <laughs> 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 Who's the best? This guy. I think I. I think he's the best. Really? What? Bro, Krishna is best. But he can't run. Serious, What? dude. I, that's that's like one week of training. Been on the football pitch in eight years. But he's yeah. still the best. I'd what? Thank you. <laughs> bro, he's a good defender. He's Stoui's a good keeper. Stu is probably the most delusional person <laughs> on this <laughs> podcast right now. <laughs> yeah. No, I think the best is. Uh. That's what you were saying. No, no. I think it's Yugu after me. <laughs> <laughs> We've had very intense discussions about this. But are you are you better than Zed? Zed's level? Uh, so position to position, right? No, so no, just pound for pound, position. pound for pound. Pound for pound. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're at par. We're good. At par. At par with yeah. Zed. Yeah. That's a good yeah, play. I'm better at Zed, so I'm better. He's at absolutely. <laughs> he's absolutely <laughs> not you, better than Zed. Are you on par with Aves? Better, worse? He's worse. Aves, I, worse I like Aves. Like I think he plays better. Is okay. Krishna better than Aves? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. I don't know who Aves is. 
काजोल एपिसोड माई मॉम के Want to talk about that now? <laughs> yeah, if you it's want nice to, bro. Segue. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's like just that. intense old Bollywood vibes, bro. Mm. Full stop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like one of context. your more challenging episodes, right? Uh, all the politicians were challenging hmm. for different reasons because of the environment you're in. Hmm. Like, I like having just my own crew. Yeah. Uh, in my room, which is like two or three people. But when you're doing it with the politicians, it's their entourage mm. uh, who will sit there, the PR person making notes. Uh, dude, some of these horror ones also they're challenging in like a different way. It's like if I'm doing a horror podcast, uh, I keep only like one uh, podcast recording on that particular day. Otherwise, I can do a second or a third one. Mm. Uh, it's very heavy energy, man. Like yeah, if you've yeah. ever gotten through any of like the horror podcasts we've done, it can become extremely dark. and it just it mm. it drains you <clears throat> as the content creator yeah like how how are you going to go and promote someone's film after that like you know it's after talking about ghosts and everything and so suddenly or, you're or like have happy like oh, hello hello <laughs> <laughs> yeah all just have a conversation bro like it yeah. it does uh, i i i prefer this whole one a day system it yeah. works well for me can't do that all the time because content creation includes a lot of travel mm-hmm. so you have to pipeline which means like I always have a month long pipeline built ahead of me like of releases which is four a week four and four so I have 16 releases built out ahead of me yeah um and I the ideal case is to have 32 and not just 16 just schedule ready to go yeah like 32 podcasts just like in the mm, bank yeah. ready to go so that I can have two week three week long yeah so you right now have 16 episodes ready to go right now 16 but Damn. the ideal case is 32 You know, our this episode will go out tomorrow. <laughs> 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 That's it. <laughs> That's how bad we are. I, I, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, bro. It's just like it's it's partly engineering mindset yeah. to mm. like just like ensure yeah. that like shit is ready. Uh, but uh, it's also the fact that I've done this for so long. I've seen everything that can possibly go wrong while running a podcast, yeah. Yeah. including re- audio not getting recorded and all that. मेल्फ and i just sat there waited for him while he was in a meeting and said i'm really sorry sir this is what happened i can't help it because it's out of my hand mm-hmm. but yeah. some the thing is in this format things can and will go wrong way there's too many moving parts yeah. mm-hmm. at this at all times yeah. yeah i don't i don't think people understand this whole uh, bro uh, i i personally feel like podcasts if you're consistent and you're consistently improving like y'all are at the point y'all have reached At the point you have reached, and <laughs> you just talk about things going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, bro. It's it's just about guess. Like if uh, you all if you all just get the guess, uh, the podcast will build itself. Mm. But that's the challenge. Yeah. It's too fucking difficult to get guess. People, uh, there's a lot of assum. Okay, you, you ask me something about um, what pisses me off about the criticism that people uh, take it for granted that we get like really big people. Mm. People don't know. Like the kind of efforts that have gone in for years, yeah, mm. uh, to get that one guy who's coming now. Yeah, uh, we had Vidya Valan today. I've been trying to get her since 2019 when I began the podcast, and my 15th episode or something was with her husband. So I've been requesting her since then. 
and we're on we've done like 500 episodes like this mm. with at least at least 100 like really high profile people yep anyone who's high profile beyond a certain point the work has begun 4 5 years prior to just build that sort of yeah yeah but people are just used to you getting big people now so that it's just like okay whatever another like this another which name. is they don't understand how difficult that is Hmm. And a big reason I think I'm able to do it is because I have Monk Entertainment as a company. Like I've co-founded that, and that has a PR wing. It has like talent. I'm not marketing Monk. I'm just giving you a no, no. We like, <laughs> <you. laughs> it's all, it's all good. Uh, but uh, I have really solid co-founders there. I have a solid co-founder in Beer Biceps. These guys are scouting for like high-profile guests all the time as well. So it's not just my efforts. Okay, bro. We'll sign. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have sign. To. <laughs> don't sign. It's all cool. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> kidding. No, bro. But that that is actually true. Uh, also, getting the guests that you really want, and also now because there's other podcasts, there's that other angle of I want to get them before this person gets them. Not for me. Because you get them first, now. Yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> uh, dude, I have just been in content long enough. Again, fitness content learning. Mm. You. Can or you have to just keep your eyes on your own game. Yeah. And the yeah. moment your eyes start moving away, you're actually not putting enough energy in your own game. Yeah. And if if you if you actually truly put your eyes on your own game, things will fall into place like very heavily. Yeah. I'm learning that now. Before I would think it's a competition, like, but now it's just like, no, you do your own thing. The reason I don't feel like content creation is a competition is because there's so much creativity involved, and creativity is an outcome of. your reality for the last 24 years of your life mm-hmm. so whatever you create is so unique to your life dude there's no way anyone can compete with you yeah. but it it and this is something i learned as a talent manager when i was helping viraj myself and i was seeing that fuck why are okay both of us come from the same engineering college and we've had that little ruthless non competitive engineering college man you don't give a fuck in engineering college basically when we came out into the real world and started managing talents from other parts of india other industries we realize how competitive people are like mm. and how much of a comparison mindset there is um but it just i i don't think in content creation there's any concept of competition yeah like it's too unique yeah, and there's too many people also it's just too the audience is yeah. too big so it's not like i'm stealing someone's audience like this if someone's vibing with me they're not going to vibe with these other people yeah. so like i'm not taking away from anyone But someone, someone gave me some advice at one point. I don't know who it was. They were like, each upload that you miss, you give someone else the chance to discover someone else. And I was like, bro, that's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> that's like kind of insecure. <laughs> I don't know. I never looked at it that way. Yeah. Uh, But you started the podcasting thing when I think no one was doing it like properly. There was, was the audio people, I think, at that time. Yeah, I had a podcast before DRS called Hustle Science, which was just an audio podcast, and I had too many learnings off that. Hmm. So, um, I I started DRS because I had two channels. I had a four person team in total, including myself, and I was broke. And I was broke because I'd spent money to um, renovate the Monkey office, and we were creating a project at Monkey at that point. So broke, I mean, I was in under five digits in my own bank account. Um, like I, I was at around. 50k 40k but that's the only money i had and i hadn't really saved too much money mm. till that point almost nothing um i knew that i either had to stop one of the channels and only focus on like probably hindi or i had to figure out a way to keep english alive and then keep doing my hindi my hindi stuff was all this fashion bhaiya stuff which was yeah, going yeah. a lot then because there was a big demand for like hindi fashion content so my team just sat me down and said that dude what's the easiest format of content you can create I was getting mentored in business by a lot of cool people at that point, because old successful people want to be friends with young, up and coming people. I was getting a lot of cool conversations with them. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna have these in my office. I'm gonna record it, and that's gonna be the podcast. And it was gonna be called Monkey Chat because we were trying to promote Monkey's mm-hmm. branding at that point. I was gonna co-host it with Viraj, and then by the third episode, I realized this guy's too busy to co-host it with me. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna do it alone and call it TRS." Because we had a property on the channel called TRS, etc., and then by the tenth episode, we had Priyanka Chopra, and then there was just like a tsunami of people who wanted to be on the show. Yeah, I also feel like podcasting has changed a lot since then, bro. It was like a lot of Tim Ferriss style stuff. It was like, tell me about your morning routine and yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. 
and now it's changed into how often you get a haircut <laughs> <laughs> full circle yeah seen to like just a random free flowing conversation which no. it should be like uh, Bro, I'll, I'll tell you what i'll tell you i have a problem with that it should be thing cuz who has set the rules ah correct yeah, yeah. and yeah. i i personally believe the rules are set according to the numbers mm. like numbers speak louder than anything i i have a problem with people who think they i'm not talking about you here ah. but no you can talk about me also <laughs> <laughs> It's only fair. Bro, <laughs> at this point, yeah. you can say anything about Krishna. It'll just no, no, it'll man. not be as bad. Uh, it's, all, it's all chill. But who set the rules for content or podcasts? Yeah. You know, and I, I feel again at the end of the day, if you're growing, if your numbers are coming in, you're doing the right job. Right. Yeah, there are. So before, I would think that like a podcast like yours, which is, I mean, at least I think it's changed a little now, but it was very interviewee. Where yeah. you're constantly, I have these questions. I want to ask was, them. It was a very conscious decision. Yeah, I'd never let it be free flowing because at that point, according to culture, the numbers were coming through it. Because mm-hmm. that's you have to play to the crowd, bro. Yeah, like I survived for eight years by playing to the crowd, and I truly believe in playing to the crowd. It's it's been a learning I've had repeatedly from content creation that you give the audiences what they want. Even this free flowing vibe, if in a year's time I feel like no people don't want free flowing, mm. they want to go back to the interview. I'll do that. I do whatever yeah. the crowd wants. Yeah. Until I leave and go to Goa. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> then fuck out Goa. Then away home. from the crowd. Fully. I'm here to make money, bro. Mm. So it's cool. Well, I don't know how to ask this question without it being say, like say, super say. intrusive. Like, how much money do you make? <laughs> 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 I think that's a very okay. Wait, I'll <laughs> rephrase. It. Rephrase. Like, how much does uh, your audience love you? <laughs> <laughs> In digits. In rupees. <laughs> <laughs> In rupees. <laughs> No, but I, I don't know how. To, like is, when? Is, when? Okay, when was the moment where you made the sum of money and you were like, "Fuck!" Like I'm. Years ago. Years ago. Yeah. You were like, "Shit!" Like this is. Yeah. Mm. Always show less than what you have. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But like, at that time, now I think you can say at that time how much it was, and you were like, "Whoa." Dude, I f- still find it weird that content creators get paid how much they get paid mm-hmm. for just Instagram posts. Okay, I I I think it's crazy money, but then I also understand from a business perspective that fuck the five lakhs or ten lakhs that someone's paying you for a reel is then creating maybe at least thirty lakhs in sales for mm-hmm. the brand if you've played the game right. So I understand the science of it, but it's appalling to me uh, to think that a human being has just put in. an hours effort into making a reel and they're getting paid like at least like 10 15 lakhs for it yeah but that's just like very a very just small pool right of no it's not about that like if you have gotten to a place where you can charge 5 lakhs for one hour of work that means it's many years of work that's yeah. gotten you so that's it's the pay off i don't think you can't look at it as like one hour of work right I hear you, yeah. and I think that's the correct explanation. Like what you said, that it's it's taken years mm. to get to that point, but uh, you've gotten to that point by just following the same consistent system again and yeah. again. So when you're reaching, when when you're at that stage where you're getting paid exorbitantly for mm. work, sometimes you're just like fuck. Like yeah. when you just see your bank account shoot up like yeah. by that much. Do I remember in? I can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> in engineering college, we would like pick. You know, like I mean. You would not drink a Smirnoff and drink an Old Monk to save that like hundred rupees. Mm. Now we're here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now we're sober. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we don't. <laughs> now we don't drink any sober. That's the money is there. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, money is much more valuable than fame. Mm. I will. I will tell you that fame is too fleeting, and. Um, dude, money is permanent, man. Like. And money brings convenience. Fame only brings. Chaos. mostly inconvenience yeah like, mm. yeah so i always say you shouldn't feel bad about spending on convenience like me and anish who's our he manages our money like we get into these intense fights where i'm like bro just spend the extra 500 it's better for everyone and he's like bro you can't spend that money no no i <laughs> I'm, i'm i'm like you like in this case mm. like even i really believe in this is not a problem i have to like deal with at this point mm-hmm. but over the years i've always been the guy who's spent that extra money to mm-hmm. set a certain vibe on screen mm-hmm. or use a certain kind of yeah. piece of equipment it's really important to spend money at the stage you're at but 
with mathematical you see that sorry bro. <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean that but you need you need you need like one person who's yeah. doing this a, a center defensive <laughs> mid <laughs> to balance out the center attacking yeah he's the striker bro usko sirf 38 se chipkane ka hai bro he's he's like no you can't yeah. shoot from there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like for me the anish is actually the most important people in any content creation you okay don't don't don't, don't, <laughs> don't say that in front bro, of he's gonna, he's going to he's going to he's going to tomorrow is going to wake up like sab ke gaad maarne wale bro anish of his ego is going to be no breakfast for you <laughs> Make your own fun breakfast. Dude. <laughs> Two meals a day now from now on. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you actually want, like me, I, fuck, I hate being that preachy motherfucker. But I'll, if I had to give you all like content creation advice, I would honestly stay say, um, like really challenge yourselves in terms of frequency, mm. and do like a Hindi one, like literally from tomorrow, and mm. just dive in. Like your Hindi will improve once you dive in. but like at, if you'll start doing that and you'll grow the two parallelly you'll be sitting on a lot of money mm. like a lot okay. got it do we like call it untriggered hindi or just Up like you guys think mm. it through but like um dive and don't don't analyze the hindi speaking too much like even if you'll fuck up hindi hindi audiences no one shows hindi they want authenticity mm. no the my concern with hindi is like i said the content will have to change if it's in hindi maybe you'll enjoy what you build and even hindi audiences are pretty sexual just saying <laughs> yeah no i get that but it's just it's just how it sounds it's the words that like how like, do you, how do you say this person had sex with that person in hindi inhone inke sath sex kiya ha but see you didn't say it in proper hindi he thought you don't you have to bro he ah. thought you'd say like chot dala or something <laughs> <laughs> he was expecting that only i know see it. you see how that sounds <laughs> <laughs> no no in fact like chot dala is like <laughs> down one but sex yeah, is like <laughs> it's, it's more elegant it's colonial mindset sambhog sambhog kar diya no no, no. But sambhog i'm telling you all y'all y'all will really enjoy it when y'all start mm. and What, like sex or the hindi <laughs> 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 love it love it bro i'm not doing segways today what <laughs> what did you watch as a kid like <laughs> Oh, okay, just what, like just from up. sex, yeah. remember that. What, like uh, Wait, what, porn what? wise or <laughs> <laughs> that also you can see. Let's I mean, let's start tracking back. Porn wise, I'm a Deshbak dude. I saw a lot of Indian porn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, there's always that one guy in the group who prefers Indian porn, but yeah. this is back when I used because it hits closer to home. <laughs> 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 it just feels more real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, content wise, ah. Uh, Content or maybe like TV at, at what, shows. What age what are you are, like talking about? Like cartoons. What did you watch? Uh, Dexter's Laboratory, mm. Samurai Jack. Oh, oh, oh all the cartoon network. Man of Culture, yeah. bro. Samurai yeah. Jack. A lot of like fucked up Nickelodeon stuff. I don't know if y'all are too young for that because they stopped like, showing courage them. and stuff. Courage. Like, you saw courage is cartoon. Bro, Nickelodeon oh, had like some really dark shit, uh, which I'm glad I watched. Now, mm. I mean, now I'm glad I watched it then. because it was actually giving me content creation and design education and i wasn't realizing it then but it comes out now when i'm with my uh, teammate rajas on beer bison when we're designing things for the channel i'm like hey this is like rocco's modern mm. life and he's like yeah you know that i'm like yeah i used to watch it so uh, it it taught me a lot of design and design oriented thinking and content uh, nickelodeon I, i i feel really bad for people you guys because you guys didn't get to watch it because we got to watch nickelodeon we got, like we were around spongebob uh, it was i, huh. I you got to watch spongebob huh. but there was this whole phase of cartoons before spongebob uh, there was this thing called ren and stimpy hmm. um rugrats uh, rugrats uh, there were some very dark themes in those yeah like really dark themes uh where those cartoons were made for adults yeah uh, and it was for some reason marketed to kids crocos modern life and all that So I watched a lot of fucked up shit yeah. even as a five year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a lot of shit that you watch now and you're like, whoa, like this is what they uh, were trying to say. Yeah, this is yeah. what they meant. Like I watch SpongeBob sometimes still, and yeah, I'm like, bro, yeah. this is some intense <laughs> stuff. Like they've taken themes, like they've displayed terrorism, everything, like mind control. They've shown all of it in SpongeBob. Brainwashing yeah. and everything. Mm. So then you're like, fuck. but you don't get it as a kid. As a kid, though, it's just funny when he hits his head somewhere, and you're like, oh, <laughs> that's like that's what entertains you. Yeah, um, I I remember this need for wanting to see like mind-bending shit even as a kid. 
like mm. edit and edit we seen it in yeah. yeah same same logic like when you see it now you realize how dark that show was uh and if a show wasn't dark enough i didn't watch it mm. uh like i remember each of those samurai jack episodes very vividly to be takes on that army of those spider robots that was one of the yeah, yeah. episodes <laughs> what is the name of the villain i forgot his name for whatever yes yeah, <laughs> nobu i don't know bro he was Samurai Jack about the show and he was a fucking trippy guy also bro whoever that Shoru? guy was I don't know. yeah I know yeah. I know what you're talking about yeah. but yeah um very uh, yeah so a lot of that um for I, Pokemon Dragon Ball Z all of that Dragon Ball Z Pokemon I I knew enough to be cool <laughs> as a kid but like <laughs> I didn't like enjoy Pokemon yeah, like, yeah. I just watched it because it was a cool thing to do um um Dragon Ball Z a lot like I've watched rewatched I've done a lot of gaming again as a kid bro like and I feel and like I understand that as an engineer again now uh gaming is supposed to be the most difficult UI UX to be able to figure as a UI UX designer um the right games can like teach you a lot of a shit a lot that goes yeah. behind yeah. it have you ever played Skyrim you played I haven't played it but I know of it bro what a sick game man <clears throat> like um it released on PC and PlayStation 3 in like 2009 or 2008 uh it's got 120 hours of story gameplay then something like 4000 5000 hours of side missions hmm. and then unlimited collectible uh, unlimited hours of like just collectible so that game never gets over okay uh and they've made it pretty you can um you get to do like a lot of different things so there's different there's a map that's the size of asia Mm. So it takes time to even like go over the entire map. Yeah. yeah. Uh and you get to go to different towns and different towns have different vibes where they've in a very soft way shown racism in a very soft way shown civil mm. war. Very layered game um um there's like booth prate stuff all that different towns have different mission formats on one town you join like a warriors group where it becomes a melee game and it tests your reflexes. in another uh, town you get to play a whole stealth game so each town that you go to opens up a new vibe very yeah. very intensely made game it's like it. multiple games within one game yeah it's yeah. like a free world sort of a thing where you can best like open world open uh, world yeah best open world game i played better so, than gta yeah for what? me for really? me really yeah yeah that's and i played i played a lot of gta i played a lot of red dead i only play like like sports games or open world mm-hmm. and uh, this is the best game i've played in my life and i'm i'm playing it now bro like i bought a playstation again recently uh because i w- i just wanted to i wanted to bring like life balance in my work yeah, life yeah. balance situation uh and the first thing i did was download skyrim and it's shit graphics compared to like 2023 graphics ha purana ho gaya game but it's so much more fun mm-hmm. like what do you think about this like new wave of mobile gaming now Are i don't do i'm i'm too old for it like i think i've missed that wave but it's cool so this whole goa thing i keep saying like i want a year off where i'm doing nothing uh the, the thing is once you've done business to a certain degree you become really good at business and you know what to do in order to make that next bag of cash mm-hmm. i would like to become a gaming entrepreneur like i'd actually mm-hmm. like to design like an indian skyrim or like mm. a fifa for cricket like you mm-hmm. know i want to make like indianized mobile games yeah but it'll be in the next phase of my life and honestly dude like I love content but I'm a little done. So mm. at some point soon I want to have this like very intense career switch. You're feeling a burnout by now? No, I'm I'm just I'm not feeling uh, like he just seems like he's fallen out of love with it. Yeah. The drive is not there. Yeah, no, the love is not there, bro. The drive is there because it's getting money and fame. Okay. And I don't feel like I'm maximizing for money by doing content. I'm maximizing for like influence mm-hmm. like you actually get to affect people's lives but in that the amount of time i'm dedicating to content i can make 1000x the money by doing tech businesses which i'm capable of doing as an engineer yeah. so i have been questioning things i have friends who are billionaires and i've tried like seeing their life up close um and it it's doable like i think i think actually content creation is more difficult than scaling a tech business if you know what you're doing in tech yeah. so i'm just i'm i'm maybe that love that i see in in you guys for this process maybe that's gone away mm. but i love how much i get to learn yeah so yeah. i'm i'm just taking the podcast as a it's like it's like school or college that i know this is going to be good for me in life that i'm learning a lot it's been long now since you've been doing this it's been long since i've been doing content dude and content used to be way more difficult um 
pre 2019 i i think this the new generation of content creators doesn't know how difficult it was for us mm. in terms of money in terms of convincing your parents and in terms of just growing also bro we didn't have real shots to mm. just give you all like boost you had to come up the hard way and horizontal <laughs> content sound <laughs> like a shot we <laughs> <laughs> had to come up the hard way bitch <laughs> Yeah, this is your version of you know how much we had we had to walk to school. <laughs> <laughs> the advantage is that okay, so I've had I have peers from my generation who faded mm. away. Yeah, and I feel the worst for them because they were at the top when it was very difficult. They got there through hard work and then gave up. Yeah, mm. and now they're not minting the money, money that they could have. Been. Yeah, I I dude, my heart breaks for like my peers, like who have stopped for the people who continued from that phase. you cannot design a better outcome as a content creator like they were the first movers in india plus they're in this phase where brands now are like on board uh, mainstream media is on board etc yeah it's probably the only reason i'm continuing because it'll be major chutia banti to like yeah you'll look back and be like man yeah that I this was it. the diamond phase mm. Mm. So okay, bro. We'll take it from here. Now you can, you can retire. You can retire. <laughs> no, bro. But it is. It's a twenty-four-seven job, dude. Like I was talking to Yugo about this, and these guys they quit their jobs like last month. Not Krishna, but Stuvi and Yugo. And I was like, bro, like there you'd go work eight hours, you'd come back. It's done. This is is never done. Like yeah, you're constantly. It's on only now. So if you want to do other stuff other than the podcast, there's just like you're constantly creating something or you're editing or you're putting it out. Like I don't know many creators who have stayed relevant for ten years, like fifteen years, whatever. It's just the biggest creators go away. Yeah, yeah. and it's either either you you lose energy or you lose love. Yeah. So like PewDiePie has kind of like quit now. I after. think he lost he lost love again. Dude. Yeah. And I, what else? Like there wasn't. After a while, you also get tired now. We what do I like, what do? Yeah, just the same thing. And yeah. How and much he, will you do? He has put out how many videos? Like yeah, dude. he has to put out. He had put out like three thousand videos before he blew up. PewDiePie. Oh. He had, he had He's moved to Japan. What's yeah. that sound? Exactly, it's really pissing. There's this one constant ringing uh, sound. It's outside. <laughs> Yeah. It is. It is outside. Are you guys good? You're like standing for like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's the conversation? Good. Fun. Okay. I actually need to take a pee break. Bro, your drip looks sick. <laughs> My drip, like the this. He likes your clothes. That's oh, okay. the the. the He's twenty. No, I know. I know. I know what drip is. He's twenty. That's why he talks like that. <laughs> But I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> चिल्लो <laughs> You guys want to go ahead, like? No, no, we no, don't. No, no. I'm asking, like, genuinely, like, do you have? It's a diet that you follow. Uh, I have to eat like very simple, no masala, no nothing. Mm. Ideally, like throughout the week, but then once in once in a while when I feel like eating something, I'll I'll get my cook like make some something, which is also again satvik. It's healthy and. So you don't eat outside food. Uh, I try not to do. Yeah, I'm I'm trying not to like the more. Uh, Life moves forward. This is the mental martial arts. <laughs> you said that <laughs> too many times. <laughs> in this, I don't. I'm not even sure what it means. Like what it's just it? like advanced. Are we rolling? Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, it's just like very advanced forms of meditation, bro. So like where you actually have like very technical meditations, mm. like katas, mm. uh, very elaborate. Like imagine what a kata is for a body. Yeah. Uh, a kata in martial arts is like a set of different moves put together to form a dance mm. now imagine a set of like breathing patterns and mental uh, and visual elements placed one after the other to put you in a slightly higher state of consciousness what that means is 
Like how do I explain this, man? What do you mean by visual elements? Like you see things when you're you, in that you state. You have to visualize. Okay. Oh, uh, you want to. So you're told by someone. No, is the someone you, guiding you? You are. Are you on a cult? Like a <laughs> no, no. It's a it's a technique you're taught. It's it's like martial arts. Like you, you're taught a technique by a a teacher. Um, a coach. Like a yeah, meditation like a coach. coach. Um, and that technique is very elaborate. So and and you're not allowed to share it. You're not allowed to like say it like publicly and mm. all that. And even if I do, it's so elaborate that people won't really get yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, once you experience what that higher state of consciousness makes you feel like, mm-hmm. you're a- at least for me, I was able to leave anything that was holding me back very easily. Like I didn't have that craving for alcohol and all that. But that's my subjective yeah. reality. After drinking a lot and enjoying my alcohol a lot to the degree where I named my fucking YouTube channel yeah. after like what I enjoyed yeah. the most. But uh, at this stage, it's not just about the, so. It's about practicing the technique twice a day, doing the supplemental exercises around it, um, ensuring your lifestyle is not like breaking those rules, and then there's like internal vice cleaning, which means uh, if I feel angry and if I'm expressing that anger, uh, it's one step backwards for me in the uh, journey of that. Okay. Oh, meditation. How often do you like do this very intense meditation? Like, is it on every day? I'm supposed to do it twice. I do it once. Uh, it's also a reason I want to leave. Like, I'm I'm bringing that up a lot, but that's yeah. honestly what's in my head right now, bro. Like, uh, I would like to like dedicate more time to it because I've even through the show I've realized that's the real goal of human existence. That you need to like spiritually evolve. We're saying the word spiritual, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but you you only realize that when you you your body and your mind and your soul experiences those things. It's like how do you explain to someone what being drunk feels like until they've been drunk? Mm. Same thing, but in a much more elaborate way. Yeah. And the first time you do it, you realize, fuck, my mind, body, and soul can feel like this. And I've done every possible nasha you can think of while in college. Mm. So I've I'd experienced all that and more, and I've done wilder shit than you can think. But when I experienced this, one, it satisfied my inner child's need for having a martial art, which I was missing, because if you've grown up doing martial arts, you always have a need for that mm. a system. And two, I just realized, shit, this is like healing me from the inside, and I'm coming out with a lot more energy and creativity. So I know I'll be able to use this to like move my That's career good. forward. And at that point, I really had to figure out how to make money. So. Again, circumstances just led me to taking it very seriously, and now it's become like, it's become like the central wire of my life, man. Everything is built around that. Yeah. But what what you're describing is this what they call like enlightenment. It's some? the journey to enlightenment, mm. but that's the goal, and that's gonna take decades. But I want to begin now. Mm. And and I I probably realized through the show, through all, and I've met monks from like different faiths, different schools. They all in the same journey of like journey to enlightenment because it's the only thing you carry after you die. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, and I've, I've it's I, the only books I read at this stage are spiritual books, and they also point you in the same direction. But forget all that, just in terms of what it can bring to your material life. In terms of you process things faster, you can stay disciplined more easily. Um, you're just more chill. You're more forgiving. uh you're much better as a partner to someone in like a relationship um your your relationship with your own family your parents starts healing so you, when you see all that you realize okay this is the real deal even if enlightenment is not the mm. eventual outcome whatever this is doing is just fixing everything else yeah. so it becomes so addictive that the alcohol and pot and meat look very tiny as compared to the outcomes of this mm. but You'll only understand it after you fully experience it yourself, and when you keep all your cum retained, like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But can you do all of that while like chasing still, a material? No, chasing is fine. Like, can you still eat meat and? You uh, can, and the process will be slower. Hmm. So it's about like lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know about it? <laughs> about lube? <laughs> What do I not know about lube? <laughs> no, I, uh, I think you've uh, you talked about 
doing different stuff i think you've done a video where you speak about your uh, ayahuasca trip oh you've done ayahuasca yeah bro everyone <laughs> who's successful has done it at some point like it's what, <laughs> it's what i'm trying to what i'm yeah, been seeing like i was looking for it came samne se but I, where did you do it sorry to uh i was on vacation in seychelles okay. yeah so See, my where is uh, it it's next oh. to mauritius okay so uh, didn't go out looking for it uh i don't i don't think i'm going to relay the whole story mm. what i will say is like that it was the first experience that opened me up to spiritual thought like that oh fuck reality can be like this also mm. uh everything that you hear and read about ayahuasca is not true uh in terms of you have scary experiences and all that i also feel it's not for everyone and i'm not at all preaching that yeah. everyone mm-hmm. go and do this um it is being studied by neuroscience because it actually it helps you heal like they say that it uh, breaks certain neural patterns and biologically forms new neural patterns that's what they've observed mm. i can vouch for it that i felt like that and i definitely feel it's not for everyone mm. so i'll, I'll say can be intense for like for some like you can see it going sideways no 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 uh, that's the i i get where mm. you're coming from but that's not the reason i i just feel um the the effects of it can be found through meditation as well correct it. like it's the exact same things that happen because meditation also releases dmt which is the active molecule yeah. mm-hmm. so um um if you're really fucked in life like if you're really fucked and like therapy is not helping meditation is not helping then maybe consider this or if it comes to you samne se which it did in my case i didn't go out looking for it and literally a guy came up to me started a conversation and then i realized i mean he told me that he's a shaman you need you need someone to administer like a pandit mm-hmm. how we are pandits you mm-hmm. and he was a trained shaman he knew what he was doing etc so but how did you like confirm that he was actually a they have, I, they have a ritual na when you're doing <laughs> they so, like that's a risky thing if someone comes up to me was, like i'm a shaman he was a, I, i knew him professionally before he revealed that he was a shaman okay oh, god i knew what god. he so i he was a reputed person So I suddenly realized that okay, this guy knows what he's doing. He's a doctor. Okay, so not some rando. It's like come to the jungle. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you things when you come there. I'll show you things. <laughs> <laughs> you drink this and you sleep for eight hours. This reminds me of that Hadi Singh interview of yours, bro. Where he says, "I'll show you things when you come there." What is he talking about? You know, dude. I'll tell you what Hadi Singh when he sat down in front of me, there was no ice to break. Hmm. He was just an open guy, hmm. and I've rarely seen that. Like out of five hundred podcasts, maybe three, four people have been like that, hmm. like just ready to talk and ready to be open. No, not at all guarded. Yeah. So I'm open to whatever he's gonna show me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Did he show you? <laughs> I'm yet to go to <laughs> Delhi. <laughs> So let's oh, see. It will happen. Trip. He's quite out there, bro. Like he, <laughs> <laughs> he said some wild shit. <laughs> he uh, sometimes you know you're talking to a creative genius. Yeah. Dude, I felt like that when mm. just definitely eccentric, but yeah. some Kanye West uh, Kanye thing West. is going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like very some creative genius is speaking here. No, he had the vision, bro. At the time, like when he started putting out the music that blew up, like no one was doing it, and then he was like, no, this is this is, and then I've never seen an Indian. Like artists become so big as so hen- fast, so uh-huh. fast. Like every movie, it's a Honey Singh movie, yeah. a Honey Singh title track. Something is there. Yeah, I think Bacha. After that, he also like just blew up. But there yeah, must Honey be something the to big, big, big one. There must be something that he has up here. A R Rahman, hmm. Amit Trivedi, and Honey Singh. All these three guys have been on the show, and they've said one thing in common, which is that they hear the tunes in their dreams. and the thoughts before they make the tune always mm-hmm. so they don't know where it's landing from so it's just some selected souls man so honey mm-hmm. singh in his dreams he is thinking char book the song bangs bro <laughs> it's a fucking bangs bro yeah yeah bro today you go was taking a shower and like i oh, was in the room and i could hear bro he is listening to brown rang while taking a shower <laughs> Imagine dude, it's my day, it's my jam, dude. <laughs> Honey, sing when you're taking a shower, bro. <laughs> that shit slaps. <laughs> Such him. Uh, we were at how you discovered un- untriggered. Yeah, so my default setting is that I notice camera quality, sound quality, and like you can, 
you know when you see a footballer dribbling for the first time even if the footballer is 19 you can tell oh, okay this guy's got like a very good touch like so i i my first incline was i noticed that that shit this is packaged well shot mm. well like in the first second then i see what you're saying and then <laughs> then my <laughs> gauge is like no no my gauge is are you criticizing my content or mm. uh, me then you were mainly criticizing what bhai bhai have stood for which was content so not a problem mm. and then i'm i'm now able to see wh- where the hate or trolling or criticism yeah. comes from and i you quickly realize if it's not if it's a good or bad place bro and i didn't mm. see a bad place then i saw more of your stuff like and i generally like i really liked how chill the overall energy was of the show and i realized that dude i would watch this as an urban indian dude mm. so it tick marked like commercial boxes for me and then i just kept watching yeah. so i'm very chill with like people dissing if it's made with the right energy yeah no i think with him also he was saying i'm frustrated that this keeps showing up it wasn't like oh this cool it's, like, it's, i think that's I, why i think really like said now <laughs> yeah, i think that <laughs> that was that that time it wasn't like out of There was no hate. I know, such. bro. I I don't hold anything against you. Like, there's no. No, no, I know, but yeah. I'm, I just thought I'd like you know. It's all good. <laughs> Make bro. myself clear, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You guys want to hug it out? <laughs> <laughs> we've we've done <laughs> we've done we've done more. No, no. Oh, this is oh, <laughs> iconic. <laughs> yeah, and and um, dude, boy, I mean, I I feel like I feel India needs more open conversations mm-hmm. like this, and I I kind of appreciate you guys for not being uh, filtered. Yeah. Uh, so uh, enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, every every yeah, thought say that. <laughs> PR incoming. Bro, we're going to we're going to start getting damn pissed, bro. Once people say "I saw my bull," "I saw my." Oh, bull. you have no idea what you're looking for, bro. Like, <laughs> because it's like behind me now, <laughs> and I started exactly where you all are, <laughs> the same fucked up uh, mindsets. <laughs> but you all have no idea how annoying it gets. And then after a point, it becomes so annoying that you you just get used to how annoying it is. You're, and like, you're like, okay, fine, I'll it. say this, I'll do yeah. this, I'll do that. Because you yeah. see cash going yeah, up, yeah. and you see cash being affected by these things. Mm. I mean, it depends on your own motivations, but I feel I'll tell you what, you all wouldn't have been so consistent and like consistent with improvement if. you all weren't in it for mainstream commercial growth reasons yeah, yeah. and i think it's the right reason you should do content creation and i really respect uh, like troops that don't just do instagram yeah yeah um there's too much of that now yeah and there's too little of youtube which also means there's a lot of opportunity on youtube yeah. but it takes a consistent troop to like actually yeah. make money off of this yeah. that is beautiful bro like <laughs> like thank you for doing this first of all and secondly like every time this conversation came up like where we spoke about i think i was since the first time we even spoke about doing this i told these guys and krishna was like bro how can we just like we, yeah. like switch up like that like you can't just diss someone so much and then like sit and talk to them i was <laughs> like bro it's not about that at all first of all it's a good piece of content secondly i was like <laughs> <laughs> in the he was like jhagda ho jayega acha hai views are nahi i knew it would be a good episode and like even on the podcast i would say like i even if i don't watch the content i appreciate like the hustle <laughs> i'm glad and uh, the grind because after we started doing it i figured okay to get to that place it's like Bro, there's, like, a there's a lot that goes. There's a lot that goes, and there's like there's no way you can, like, not acknowledge that. Thank you, bro. I'm just yeah. running away from my own demons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, uh, yeah. I'm. I. I was just super ambitious about like YouTubing mm. when I began. Bro, that ambition is still there. Though I'm crying about like mm. not being in love, I'm. I'm still really hungry for like a lot more growth, bro. Mm. So I feel validated. Thank yeah. you. I mean, but. Yeah. Uh, Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not done, dude. There's gonna be a lot more in terms of like continuing this because um, again, after point one, I'm not where I want to be fame wise. I think money wise, I'm a little mm-hmm. done. Fame wise, not where I want to be. Uh, I feel as you grow older, uh, you realize how much of your work can like really mm-hmm. impact people's heads. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You, you guys, you guys will see it in time. Yeah. Well, I hope I you have. get there. And again, yeah, thanks for doing this. this Thank you, guys. Untriggered you, with your biceps. It feels weird even saying that, bro. Who would have thought? Yeah, bro. Not me. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Oh, good. I feel like I was. I mean, I felt like I was back in engineering college. So yeah. always. That was not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's great, bro. Penis energy for the win. <laughs> 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 we started with penis energy. We ended we with ended penis, with penis energy. energy. Ended nice. with big dick energy, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 